we're starting off directly in DxO Pure Raw 2. And just in case you either haven't seen this before or maybe it's been a while since you've looked at it, I do want to show you how the app works just on its own. So to start off, this is the basic interface. There's not a whole lot going on in here until we add some photos. I can click on the Add Photos to Process button or as you see here, simply drag and drop. So I'll switch back over to the Finder, select all these photos from a new shoot. This could be photos that I've just copied off of a memory card and drag them into the interface. Now, the first thing that pops up is this DxO Optics Modules download. You've probably heard about the DxO Optics Modules before and how this is a critical part of how DxO software works. These modules allow us to process the images with the absolute utmost quality. And a module has to be downloaded for each individual camera and lens combination. Now, once they're downloaded, you never have to do it again, and they're always very small, so it's quick to do. But every time you add a new camera and lens combination photo to your collection, you'll need to go ahead and download the module for that. So here you can see these were shot on a Panasonic Lumix S1R, which is a very high resolution, almost 50 megapixel camera with the 24 to 105 lens. And it says here to be downloaded. I click on download selection. As you can see there, it's quite small, downloads very quickly. Click on save and that's it. I'll never have to see that again for this particular camera and lens combo. Now that I've got my photos in place, I'm ready to process them. I don't want to process all of these photos for this demo. I'll just do one. So I'll go ahead and select one. Let's say this one here. And then to process it, click on the Process Photos button. And this brings up the Process dialog, which if you haven't seen this in a while, you may actually be seeing a couple of new things in here. First of all, from the top, you choose your method of raw processing. Do you want HQ or high quality, prime or deep prime? Deep prime, of course, being the best possible quality. We'll go ahead and leave it there. Underneath that, you'll see an estimated processing time. Once it's processed photos from that particular camera, it'll know roughly how long it takes and it will give you that estimate. Underneath that, we have the option to turn off global lens sharpening and or the lens distortion correction. So if you wanted either one of these off, you can go ahead and toggle that. And this is due to popular requests from the users. Underneath that, you have your format option. You can choose to process these as a JPEG or as DNG. And then finally, your destination folder. Where will the new files go? By default, they go into a subfolder called DxO in the same folder as the original images, or you can create a custom folder if you want to. I'm just gonna leave everything at its default and click on process. Now, this is a pretty fast computer. I'm working on a Mac Pro here, which has got a ton of power. And so this processing is actually gonna be pretty quick, maybe a little bit quicker than what you're used to seeing. However, I will point out that on the M1 processor, the speed has improved dramatically over the previous version of Pure Raw. In fact, I ran some tests comparing my baby M1 MacBook Air, the very first M1 processor to this Mac Pro, and the Mac Pro is only a little bit faster. That M1 processor is just screaming right now. All right, processing is done. What do you want to do next? We can export it straight to our host app, or I want to go ahead and view the results. I can take a quick look at the results of this so I can see just how good these results are. I'm going to go ahead and look at this at a one-to-one -one zoom, zoom all the way in there. And right away, you can see a huge difference on the left versus the right, how much softer the image is on the left versus the much sharper, much higher contrast image on the right. Just an absolutely dramatic improvement in here. Now, this is not a high ISO image. And usually you might think that Pure Raw is really just for those really high ISO images to get rid of incredible noise. And it does that really well. But as you can see here, it does an incredible job just enhancing even low ISO images. But I do wanna show you one area where there's a bit of noise in this photo. Now, admittedly, this might be a little bit hard for you to see through the Zoom interface, but I'm looking at an Apple XDR screen. So I'm seeing an absolutely incredible amount of detail. It's not adding detail that's not in the photo. I'm seeing stuff that's in the photo. So you may not be able to see this through Zoom, but I can see here that down in this foggy area. See down with the mist, there's a little bit of a color transition as it goes from kind of a palish brownish greenish mist up to the bluish mist. On the left hand side, there's quite a bit of is it noise or just kind of breaking up of the image in there, whereas on the right, it is perfectly smooth and clear. And again, it might be a little hard to see through zoom, but I just want to point out to you that when looking at this on an incredibly high quality screen, I do see some of these things that are might be otherwise missed and it looks incredible here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and leave it at that. We'll close this out. At this point, if I process the rest of them and I was ready to send them off to my host app, I would go up here to the export to button, choose the app that I wanna send it to, and off we go. So that's basically the old way of doing it with a few enhancements along the way. All right, now let's take a look at one of the new ways of doing this. I'm gonna go ahead and quit Pure Raw. Yes, that's right, I'm quitting Pure Raw to continue the demo with Pure Raw. You'll see why in a moment here. Let's go back to this new shoot folder. 
These are all the photos that I had dragged into Pure Raw a moment ago. You'll notice here there's that new DxO folder containing that new deep prime processed image. So let's say once again, we've just come back from a shoot. I've copied all of my photos from the memory card to my computer, and I want to process all of them with Pure Raw. Instead of going through the interface and selecting each one and so on, I can actually do it directly from the Finder or from Windows Explorer, like this. All I have to do is select the images that I want to process. I'll just go ahead and grab a couple of them here, right click on them, and then there's a new option here called DxO Pure Raw Process with Last Use Settings, Process to DNG, or Process to JPEG. If I want to convert these all to DNG using Deep Prime, that's all I have to do. The app will launch in the background and effectively run in a headless mode where we don't see the interface, we don't have to see anything other than a progress bar, so we can just sit back and let it do all of the work. It is, of course, going to be processing these into a DxO folder up here, just as it did before, and once that's done, we'll see those new images processed there and ready to go. This can be quite a nice time saver. If you just want to get your images processed and get them ready to go into the app, you don't want to mess around with it, just copy them over, select all, right click, and there you go. Okay, once those are done, they're done, and now I can do whatever I would normally do with them. Now let's look at another way of processing these. I'm gonna switch over to Lightroom Classic. As you saw in the slides, a huge percentage of Pure Raw users are using Lightroom Classic. And so we wanted to really ensure that we enhance the workflow for Lightroom Classic users. So let's see how this works. I'm gonna start by choosing a photo here that is frankly not very good. If I zoom into this, you'll see it's not that sharp. It's very, very grainy. It's just, it's not a good photo, but you know, my kid loves hedgehogs, so I gotta make the best out of this picture. All right, well, let's see what I can do with it. I'm gonna go over to the develop module and let's scroll over to the noise reduction and let's see what I can do. Noise reduction is currently at zero, so I'll go ahead and bring that up and you know, it, it gets better, right? As I drag this up, it does definitely get noticeably better. It's still a bit noisy in here, but look at how soft and flat this has gotten. It's, you know, it really is not great. I could try to add some more detail, maybe add a little contrast to it, but at the end of the day, we're not gonna get great results out of this. So let's see what happens if we send it to Pure Raw. Now, the easiest way to do that from within Lightroom Classic is to simply right click, choose export, and then process with DxO Pure Raw 2. This is going to automatically round trip the photo over to Pure Raw. Now, you'll notice here that the DxO Optics module download is gonna pop up again. This tells me that I haven't yet downloaded the specific camera and lens combination optics module needed for this photo. So even though I'm not running Pure Raw with its main interface, this prompt will still come up and allow me to download the modules as needed. I'll go ahead and click on download selection and then save that. This brings up the same interface that we saw inside of Pure Raw itself. I can make all the same choices here that I could in the main app, but I'll go ahead and leave everything as it is and click on process. This is going to process the image into a DNG and then automatically re-import it back into Lightroom. Lightroom not only imports the photo, but it also creates a new collection with just the import. Now in this case, I actually wanna see the two images side by side. So I'm gonna go back over to the library, click on that wildlife folder again, and you'll see in here as well, the new DxO subfolder. If I wanted to just see that picture, I could select it here. But if I click on the wildlife folder, I'll see everything inside of it. Which by the way, if you're not seeing, go up to this menu here and ensure that show photos in subfolders is enabled. That way you'll see everything in the top level folder as well as the DxO folder underneath it. So here's the two images. Let's go ahead and do a side-by-side -side comparison here. And you can see the DxO processed image on the left and the original one in Lightroom on the right. And there is a substantial difference in here. Not only is there noticeably less noise, the image is sharper, higher contrast, and it just looks better. All right, so that's an easy one to start. Let's do something a bit more advanced. Let's say that you are already working on a bunch of images and you've done some color correcting work and straightening and whatever you're doing to it. And then you decide, hmm, you know, maybe I should have processed this with pure raw, but I don't want to have to redo all the work that I did. Well, the good news is you don't have to. Let me show you how this workflow works. Let's go ahead over to this photo here. And this one is totally unprocessed and you know, it's, it's a cute photo, but it's a bit on the flat side and well, let's just see what I can do with it. So I'll go into the develop module and I'm just going to start with a quick little auto balance. It looks better already. Maybe I'll take my black point down a little bit more. And if I zoom in close in here, we're gonna see there really is a lot of noise in here. So maybe I can hide some of it by taking my black point down a little farther. Uh, by the time I get to the point where the noise is gone, I've totally crunched the image, so that's no good. Let's get it up a bit. Let's say right about there. 
And what else do I want to do? Maybe I want to straighten this out. I'm personally kind of obsessed with getting really straight lines when I have an image like this one. And this box that they're sitting on is just begging for me to straighten it out. So let's do that. In Lightroom, I'll scroll down here to the transform. Go to the guided transform. And just very quickly in here, I'm going to straighten this out. Let's just drag a couple lines across the vertical lines of this box that they're sitting on here. One and two, do a horizontal one across the top. There we go. I like that. So now it's straightened out. So I've applied the image adjustments. I've applied the straightening in here. Now let's see if I can do anything about this noise. I'll scroll up to here and go back to my noise reduction and start to dial that in. And just like before with the hedgehog photo, I can get it better, but it's not great. By the time I get this high enough that I've really eliminated the noise in here, look at how mushy the rest of the image has gotten. We're seeing color splotches, just this general mushiness to the image. It really is not looking great. So let me back this off a little bit. Let's try and not be crazy about it. Maybe add a little bit more sharpening, try and bring up a little bit more detail. Yeah, it's just, it's just not doing it. All right, so I've already done all this work. I've spent all this time making this image look amazing, but I just can't get rid of the noise. Well, let's see what Pure Raw can do. I'll right click on the image, choose Export, Process with DxO Pure Raw 2. The optics module for this photo has already been downloaded, so I don't have to do that. I'll just click on Process, and it's going to tear through this image and once again re import it back into Lightroom so that I can do a side by side. There she is. We'll jump back over to the Library tab. You can already see how much better it is, but let's go ahead and bring them up in a compare window and take a look at that. Massive, massive difference in there. Look at the sharpness in the fur. Look at the detail in the tail, how the noise is just completely gone. It is a dramatically, dramatically improved image. But at this point, you might be thinking, well, hold on a second. OK, you did the color correction, and you did the straightening, and all of that is copied over to here. But you also did noise reduction and sharpening onto this. Has that been copied over as well? Well, the good news is it hasn't. Check this out. Let me go back to the main view and into the develop module. And I'll start with the Lightroom only image and point out once again under detail, noise reduction and sharpening have been applied. Now I'll select the DNG and check this out, sharpening and noise reduction have been reduced to zero. Automatically on re-import, the Pure Raw 2 workflow has removed those processes. It's removed those effects that we don't want, but it left everything else behind. Now, to ensure that the effects that you do want to be carried over are automatically applied, you do want to make sure that in your catalog settings, and it is the catalog settings, not the preferences, in catalog settings, automatically write changes into XMP is enabled. And this is going to ensure that the changes that you make to exposure and everything else are automatically immediately written into that XMP file so they can be reread at the time of re-import. Now, if you don't do that or you don't want to do that for any reason, you can do this two other ways. You can manually choose to write that XMP data. So if I go up to the photo menu, there's an option here to save metadata to file. So I can do it manually that way. Or if you've forgotten, you can simply copy and paste. I can just copy the adjustments from one image and paste them onto the other. So that would work as well. All right, let's take a look at another couple of examples here. I'm going to go back into the library and go into this other collection here. And here I have three very different photos. We have some kickboxing in Thailand. I've got a scenic photo shot in New Zealand. And this is, frankly, a really bad photo. You can see it's very noisy. It's not very sharp. But you know, maybe it's the only photo that I have from this trip. And I kind of want to make the best out of it. And then I have over here a portrait. I, it's just a candid shot. I just I love this photo. It's a fun picture. But it's surprisingly not that sharp, which honestly is a bit surprising because this was shot with a really good 50 millimeter f1.2 L lens on a Canon 1DS Mark III. I mean, this photo should be amazing, but it's just not quite there. So I'm going to go ahead and process all three of these with Pure Raw. But before I do, I want to point out, let's jump into the develop module, that not only do these already have a series of adjustments already applied, but if I look down under sharpening and noise reduction, you can see that's applied too. But I also already have the profile corrections enabled for each of these photos. Remember that in Lightroom Classic, you can apply a lens profile correction to any photo. And these are custom correction profiles. They're just not as good as the DxO ones. But these are custom correction profiles that can be applied. The thing is, I'm not going to want that applied to the photo after it comes back from Pure Raw. So in fact, the same thing that we saw with the noise reduction and the sharpening will happen here. Any lens profile that's added will automatically be removed on re-import. So here I have the kickboxing shot. We can see it's added there. The New Zealand shot and the portrait here, all with the lens profiles enabled. 
All right, let's go ahead and select all three of these and go into export process with Pure Raw 2. So again, as you can see here, we can actually do this all in a batch. Select the group of photos and batch process them. Now this is gonna be considerably faster than the original photo that I did, which was a 50 megapixel photo. These are quite a bit smaller, so it's gonna take quite a bit less time and you'll see it process through these pretty quickly here. And there we have it, the images are re-importing. And once again, Lightroom's gonna load up the collection view, but I wanna go back to the library view so I can do a comparison of these side by side. Let's start off with a kickboxing photo. Check out the sharpness and the little beads of sweat popping off of the kickboxers there. Just looks incredible. If we look over here in the shadows, there's considerably less noise in the image on the left. Overall, it just looks dramatically better. Now let's take a look at this one. This is a really impressive change. Check out the noise in the sky, the overall sharpness of the image. On the left, it just looks so much better than it does on the right. It's still not a great photo, but it certainly is a lot better than it was. And this portrait, this is the one that really surprises me. Check this out. Look at the whiskers on his chin. Look at how much sharper they are here on the left versus on the right. Overall, this is just such a much better photo. Now it's gotten a little bit oversaturated, so let's go ahead and jump out of this view, go into the develop module, and maybe I wanna knock that saturation back just a touch on there, just to make it look a little bit more natural. There we go, love it. So there you have it. DxO Pure Raw 2 is a fantastic upgrade. Some great new workflow features, integrating Lightroom or just directly from the Finder or Windows Explorer, making the whole process that much easier. Being able to round trip back into Lightroom Classic and automatically having the corrections that you don't want applied removed from the image is fantastic. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this demo and for more information as well as to sign up for free DxO webinars, head over to photojoseph.com/dxo.